The Holy Gospel according to John, the 17th chapter, beginning with the 6th verse. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you. From the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with you, I protected them in your name that you gave, had given me. I guarded them, and not one of them was lost, except the one destined to be lost, so that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now I'm coming to you, and I speak these things in the world, so that they may have my joy made complete in themselves. I have given them your word, your word, and the word was hated because hated hated them because they would not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but I'm asking you to protect them from the evil one. They do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. As you have sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, so that they also may be sanctified in truth. This Dear friends in Christ, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The 17th chapter of the Gospel of John records the prayer that Jesus prayed on behalf of his disciples, on behalf of his newly founded church, and actually becomes the prayer he prayed on behalf of all Christian people of all time and place. It is called the High Priestly Prayer. That word priest is significant. The classic definition of a priest is the mediatory agent between God and humanity, or the go-between. And so Jesus becomes one who is referred to as High Priest, He's the one that reconciles the world of people to God. And it's a very significant uh, prayer. And the gospel lesson for today is really the heart of that high priestly prayer. He speaks about something about the very nature of God. If someone were to ask me, what is God really like? I'd probably suggest, among other things, well, read the 17th chapter of John. It was, of course, I've been reading and studying this for a couple of weeks now, and you heard it fresh this morning, but as you heard this gospel lesson read, there was a word that just kept coming out over and over again. Did you hear that word? It's give or gave or given. No less than nine times in that brief gospel reading, gift, giving, give, comes through. It just seems that the very nature of God is to give. God and his son, Jesus, are givers by nature. And the, the entire holy history of God and his people is a history of all the ways and all the things that God has given to his people. And it started at the creation when God formed Adam out of mud, and then it says that he breathed into Adam the breath of life and gave him life. And I've always chuckled at this wonderful story after all the animals were made and somebody figured out along the line that the man needed a human being. Dog can be a great best friend, but you know it wasn't quite the same. So God fashioned a woman and he brought Eve to Adam. And the scripture is very clear. God gave her to Adam. And Adam was delighted. 
You know, even after sin came into the world and they were banished from the Garden of Eden, what happened there? Wait a minute. I need to give you some clothes. So God fashioned clothing for Adam and Eve even after they broke God's commandments and brought sin into the world. It's God's nature to give. And then we get to the highlight of the Old Testament when God sent Moses to Egypt to bring them out of slavery and to give them a new land flowing with milk and honey. And in that long process out in the wilderness, 40 years roaming around, uh, God gave his law to them. God gave them uh, manna, the bread. He, pro he provided everything they needed. And then at the right time and the right place, and John records this beautifully in John 3.16, the greatest gift ever given. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus, to be the savior of the world. And then Jesus gets involved in his earthly ministry and his whole ministry is marked by giving. I give you the words of life. I give you the possibility of reconciliation with God. In the waters of baptism, when our relationship with God is established, Jesus gives us his spirit. He gives us the promise of eternal life, the promise of forgiveness. He gives us all these things in the waters of baptism. And then for food, for the journey, our ongoing need, God continues to give us. Jesus gives us himself. I give you my body, I give you my blood, I give you my forgiveness. It happened again this morning, just a few minutes ago. We confessed all our sins and Jesus gave the absolution. I give you this gift of the total forgiveness, the absolute forgiveness of all your sins. Giving, 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 and giving. It's the history of God and our Lord Jesus. I also want to tell you something really important. We oftentimes feel that we are the recipient of all of this giving. Here I am, Jesus, just, just give it to me, pour it in, I receive all these gifts. And we need to remember that we're not the end of the road for these gifts. On Wednesday night, uh, some of you were actually here, and I, I kind of shared, Wednesday night's a little less formal, so I kind of shared one of my personal struggles in preaching is coming up with uh, really good children's sermons. They, for me, they're extremely challenging. And I had just read an article about that a couple weeks ago, and the author of this article said, "What you, need, you always need to have some kind of a, an object lesson, something kids can see and touch to, to really imprint what you're trying to say through this object. And so I, I was saying that I really wanted to come up with something to illustrate my next point, that we're not the end of all this giving. And the first thing I thought about was having a gigantic funnel on top of my head. And a, you know, a funnel would have been real handy during the night if you were going to collect water. <laughs> but with this gigantic funnel on top of our life, Jesus and God, they just give all these things, it just pours in into us. But the point is, it, it cannot stop within us. It has to find a way to get out. So then the other thought I had for an object lesson was to have a chunk or a section of um, downspout with an elbow. And the elbow could, you know, the spout could come down your pants leg and the elbow would be at the bottom maybe. That wouldn't look too bad. So the funnel's collecting all the blessing and all the gift up here and it comes in and down and through and then out. And that's really the picture that Luther talks about all the time, that we are like a vessel where God's blessing flows in but then right out again to the neighbor, out to the right, out to the left. And so it, the good object lesson in Scripture is, is the Dead Sea. This body of water over there, it receives, receives, receives. The rivers flow into the Dead Sea, but there is no outlet. And so there's no life in that, lake, in that sea, in that lake. Everything is dead. And that's really the lesson for us too. We, 
we've got the funnel on our head and God pours all these gifts into our life, but if they don't get out, they don't do anybody any good. And so today we talk about God being the extravagant giver, that he pours it into our life, all things, everything we need. And then the blessing for us is the joy of letting it flow through us and out to the neighbor in need. That's what it means to be part of a Christian community, part of a congregation. Sometimes we get questions. Well, what happens if I give an offering, for example, to world hunger? Well, I'll tell you what happens to that offering. It comes in and then it goes right out. Within a week it's gone. In and out. The blessings come in. They are intended for people who have needs and they flow right out. It's the way we've always done it. So even in congregational life, we, we model that model. Funnel on top, you know, sometimes the church congregation might seem like a funnel. We're collecting all this stuff, but there's lots of angles going out to the left and to the right. Jesus is the extravagant giver. It's extravagant in grace, and it's a blessing for us that we can let it flow through us and out to the world so everyone may know the gifts that God has for all people. Amen.